party in progress when she saw the pictures that Heather and her friends were posting on social media. There was alcohol and mother dirt. Sheila quickly realized that Heather had booked a room using her credit card and decided to put a swift end to her daughter's disobedience. She called the police. The police came up and they arrested Heather and started shaking. Sheila had hoped her daughter learned her lesson, but it was now clear that Heather had once again disobeyed her and brought Tommy out to join them on their trip. There's no way he paid for this astronomically expensive ticket to Bali, so Sheila immediately knows Heather went behind her back and used her credit card without her permission. As the argument grew louder, they began to attract the attention of other guests and staff. Heather seemed embarrassed by the scene her mother was making. Heather kept saying, Mom, can we please go back to the room? Can we please go back to our room? And eventually, all three of them leave the lobby, and they go upstairs to work on things private. For police, the night clerk's story raised more questions than it answered. Did this mean Heather and her boyfriend were both missing? Or both suspects? What happened to these other two American tourists? How can we find them and find out if they're safe for one and two, if they know what happened to Sheila? Either way, they're probably the last people who saw Sheila Mack alive. But then the night clerk reveals another disturbing detail. Shortly after Sheila, Heather, and Tommy went upstairs together, Heather had returned to the lobby with an odd request. Heather had appeared in search of duct tape. A suitcase with her mother's body in it and wrapped duct tape. That raised an eyebrow as to what happened. Heather and Tommy had just moved to the top of investigators' list of suspects. To confirm their suspicions, Bali police requested the night's recordings from the hotel's video surveillance system. There was dozens of security cameras around this hotel. Detectives studied footage from dozens of cameras, starting with the ones outside the rooms of Sheila and Heather Mack and Tommy Schaefer. Tommy was on the sixth floor, Heather and her mother on the third floor. The video footage showed that following the lobby confrontation, Sheila and Heather went back to their suite while Tommy returned to his room. But less than an hour later, police saw Tommy leave again. You see him get in the elevator, go to the third floor, and enter the room. Heather answered the door, and soon after Tommy went inside, the camera showed the couple making several trips between their two hotel suites. We've seen Heather and Tommy going back and forth between the third floor and the sixth floor. Just going up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs between the two rooms. But what were they doing? Sometime before noon, Heather and Tommy emerged with a lot of large suitcase that was partially open that had a white sheet tied around it. The suitcase was a match for the one Sheila's body had been stuffed into. Investigators immediately searched Tommy's room and realized something appeared to be missing. They found out that a large fruit bowl was missing from his hotel room. It was a bowl similar to the one police believed had been used as the murder weapon. But while all signs pointed to Heather and Tommy as the killers, investigators still had no idea why. In order to find out, investigators would first have to track the young lovers down. Looking for clues to their whereabouts, police once again turned to the hotel's security cameras. The cameras show Heather and Tommy loading the suitcase into a cab, and then they make a break for it. There's some surveillance footage of them jumping a wall. The cameras showed the couple crossing a street in front of the hotel and hailing a second cab. And from the direction the taxi headed, investigators suspected they knew where the couple might be going. They're heading toward the airport. Detectives knew that if Heather and Tommy were on the run, they most likely would be trying to get back to the U.S. But then, police discovered something inside the safe at Sheila's room that suggested that wouldn't be possible. When they open the safe, bang, they find Heather's passport. The police knew right away that he couldn't leave the country. So 
that, but they're still in 